This is William Lyon McKenzie in the 1837 Rebellion, commentated by Stavros. Let's start off with some questions. How important were rebellions? I think the rebellions were pretty important because they brought Lord Durham over from England, and he let a lot of the prisoners go after a rebellion, and saw that they really wanted to be uh, to have a soft government, and he wrote that in his Durham report they should have a soft government. When I say for his political violence justified, I think political violence is only ever justified if it is preserving um, human life. Like in World War II, Hitler wanted to kill a bunch of people. And the only real option they could do is go to war. What is the best way to bring about political change? I think the best way to bring about political change is to have uh, make a petition, get a lot of people to sign the petition, and then take it into the government. Because then the government will listen to me. We'll see that like a lot of the population wants something to be changed, and they'll change it. William Lyon Mackenzie grew up in Scotland and came to Canada and. Funny. He went on to um, create and lead the 1837 Upper Canada Rebellion. And in Canada, Mackenzie had a newspaper, worked several jobs before starting a newspaper called the Colonial Advocate. In the Colonial Advocate, Mackenzie targeted a group of rich people known as the Family Compact, which was made up of most of the rich families that would sometimes intermarry and members of their families would take up most of the government spots. Mackenzie would write who held what spot and how they were re related to the family compact and how much money they made every year, and this made the family compact very angry. To shut Mackenzie up, some members of the family compact sent their eldest sons to raid Mackenzie's print shop. Mackenzie was in New York that day giving a lecture, so some people think that he was hiding from people who he owed debt to because he was in a lot of debt. And, and the only person in the shop was his oldest son, James. The raiders flipped over the printing press, which is really heavy, and it would be really hard even for nine men to flip it over. And, and then they threw all the little type letters into the lake. And because they were lead, they sank right to the bottom. Mackenzie sued them and tried to get 2,000 British pounds, and in the end, he won around 650 pounds, which was more than enough to repair the printing press and to get more type. And Mackenzie also had enough money to pay off his debt, so instead of putting him out of business, the raid kind of saved him. In the 1830s, people were getting very angry at the government for many reasons. First, the, governor, the people could elect um, citizens to the Legislative Assembly, but the Legislative Council and lieutenant governor didn't have to listen to what the legislative assembly was saying. So, of all the people in the legislative assembly, of all the legislative assembly meetings, the lieutenant governor and the legislative council only passed six out of 800 bills that the legislative assembly wanted passed. All the other times, they just like spend the money on wallpaper and like redecorating their offices and stupid stuff like that. Also, the government would make one out of every seven um, farm lots um, a, a church, an Anglican church lot, and the Anglican church would get so many lots that they not even do anything with these lands. They just make it like will just be like living next to wilderness if you own the land next to it. And farmers hated that because like they couldn't go next door to ask them for a cup of sugar or a cup of flour, or they couldn't like they didn't have a road there because no other farmer lived there in the middle of the road. So it was really hard to live next to a church lot. And also, they would give another one seven cents of land to the crown. So, the base would be like the same. Like, no roads or anything. And people always said that the government should sell the, the church lots and use the money to buy, like, to build, like, schools and roads and stuff that was actually useful. But of course, the government never listened to them. Then, in 1834, cholera outbreak started. And cholera is the disease that happens when. You live in an unsanitized environment, and like you're having all this unsanitization. And if 
with like your body won't accept water and it's very fast working like you could catch it in the morning and be dead by lunch and only one out of ten people who um, caught cholera survived and nine out of ten died so then like this would be the mythical way to get rid of cholera which would be like a bottle of vinegar under your nose metal chest plate over your chest balls of water under your knees stuff like that and the people again the government didn't do anything to help the people fight the cholera like or barely did anything to help the people fight the cholera in lower canada present day quebec the people had had enough a man named louis joseph papineau organized the French Rebellion. Soon all the British troops in Canada had come to Lower Canada. Papineau and his comrades flew to fled to smaller towns like St. Charles and St. Denis. At St. Denis, 300 British soldiers met 800 rebels in a battle. The battle lasted six hours until the British evacuated because of low resources. The rebels saw this as a huge victory, and seeing the success of the Lower Canadian Rebellion, and the fact that all the British troops were in Lower Canada, Mackenzie decided to start his own rebellion. But when the British troops and French rebels meet again at St. Charles, the rebels are finally defeated. Mackenzie told people all over Upper Canada to come to Montgomery's Tavern, three miles north of Toronto and at present day on in Eglinton, to march on Toronto. That is Montgomery and the paper in his hand is supposed to represent the American Declaration of Independence because Mackenzie and him and some other people thought that can that Canada should become like the USA and separate from the mother country. So at first only 150 farmers showed up at Montgomery's and very few of them had military experience. A message from Mackenzie arrived telling him to attack immediately because they were very unorganized in Toronto. But Mackenzie couldn't decide if he should attack and wait for more men to come. When several British loyalists came to see if the rumors of a rebellion were true, they were captured. But one of them escaped, killing one of the few rebels with military experience in the process. In Toronto, the militia was called out, but they were poorly armed and poorly organized. But in the tavern, things were going much better as a large group of hungry and unarmed men arrived, but found that Mackenzie hadn't made any arrangement for food or weapons. On the 7th of December, the Re Mackenzie finally decided to attack, and the rebels marched down Young Street, but met more than 1,000 loyalists. The rebels were quickly defeated, and Sir Francis Bond has ordered the burning of Montgomery's tavern. Mackenzie became wanted and 1,000 pounds um, and a 1,000 pound reward would be given to whoever turned him in. No. Mackenzie became wanted with a 1,000 pound reward on his head. Also, 500 pound rewards were given for his friend Samuel Gibson, David Gibson, Samuel Lamp, and Jesse Lloyd. Lant was later hung, but his rope was too long, he got decapitated in the process. With the help of followers, Mackenzie escaped to the USA where he was exiled from Canada until 1850. I hope you enjoyed this presentation that you'll go to the Mackenzie House to learn more about Mackenzie and the rebellion. Also, the Mackenzie House is supposed to be one of the most haunted houses in Toronto, so you might be able to hear one of the ghost stories while you're there. But now it's... Question time! Here are some questions that we didn't answer at the beginning. What, if anything, did the rebellions achieve? I think the rebellions helped to achieve um, democracy in Canada because they led to the Durham Report, which led to Canada becoming a self-government. What role did the rebellions play in the development of Canada? I think the rebellions helped Canada develop into a self-government and helped Canada develop away from imperialism because, like I said, it led to the Durham Report, which led to the, which led to democracy. How important is the rebellion to Canadian history? 
Big Red Rebellion is really important to Canadian, Canadian history because they led to the Durham Report, and like it made people realize that things were really wrong with Canada, and it led to Canada becoming a self-government and all, and that, and all, and like this year is the 175th anniversary of the rebellions, and no one's doing anything to celebrate. Like people really should be doing stuff to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the rebellions. Can they really see percent your relevant lessons in 2012? I think they can because I think they show that, like, if the government's selfish, they are going to get, or it's going to lead to, like, war. Like, the government thinks, it teaches us that the government can't be selfish, that the government always needs to think to the people first. And that's the end of this PowerPoint.